So what a year it's been for the two main game engines. A year in which Unity announced their merger with monetization company IronSource. And following the backlash, the CEO called devs who don't want to use monetization in their games the biggest flipping idiots, except he didn't use the word flipping. Oh, and they cancelled Gagea, an in-house project which was supposed to have an internal team go through the whole process of making a game from start to finish, with the end result being to learn what the frustrations of game devs using Unity are. And on the other side, we have Unreal, who saw the release of Unreal Engine 5 back in April, and 5.1 in November. And they claim that more than half of all of the announced next-gen titles are being made in Unreal Engine, including CD Projekt Red, who have shifted all of their main development over onto Unreal Engine. And this includes remaking The Witcher 1 in Unreal Engine 5. So let's take a deep dive into the advancements in both engines, and which I'd recommend starting your game dev journey in in 2023. But first, I'd like to thank today's sponsor of the video, CGMA, who helped make art and design education more affordable. More on them later. So first, let's talk about Unity and the changes that have come and are coming to the engine. DOTS, which stands for the Data Orientated Technology Stack, is made up of three packages. One of these, the Entity Component System, or ECS for short, is finally leaving the experimental phase and will be included in Unity version 2022.2 as a supported package. The two render pipelines, URP and HDRP, have had and will be receiving further updates, including the ability to use them both in the same project, allowing you to more easily manage your projects across a variety of platforms. Netcode for game objects or its release, which will enable you to dive into multiplayer development a lot quicker, as it includes a framework for managing game objects and world data across a multiplayer session. There's a great video from TarotDev covering how to get started with uh, Netcode for game objects if you want to check that out. I'll include a link for that in the description below. As of recording this video, Unity's long-term support version is 2021.3, and you can get started for free with Unity development as there is no upfront cost for using the engine to make games. So that's a brief recap of where Unity is at the moment. Next, we'll talk about Unreal Engine after a brief word from today's sponsor. CGMA courses allow you to learn from the industry's best with a range of innovative online courses, which help set you up for a successful career in the games, art, or VFX industries. And when I say the industry's best, I mean the industry's best. For example, in January, I'll be taking part in a course that is taught by Ashley Warner, a senior environment artist who is currently working at Riot Games, and previously they were at Blizzard working on World of Warcraft across six of the expansions. As well as the lectures, there are live Q&A sessions where you and the other students can ask the tutor for advice, as well as assignments with deadlines and direct feedback, which is something you don't get when learning here on YouTube. When you sign up to CGMA, you get lifetime access to the course, so you can go back and refresh yourself at any point. The courses are delivered in English, but do have English, Spanish, and Portuguese subtitles too. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link below. The first 10 people to enroll on a CGMA course will get 5% off their uh, course fees. There's multiple payment options, including employer reimbursement. So a career in the games, art, or VFX industries could be a lot closer and cheaper than you think. Thanks again to CGMA for sponsoring this video. So let's talk about Unreal Engine now. 2022 has been a massive year for Epic Games and Unreal Engine. Back in April, we saw the official launch of Unreal Engine 5, which seems to have taken the game's world by storm. The two headline features for Unreal Engine 5 were Lumen, the real-time global illumination system, and Nanite, a technology that allows photoreal assets to be brought into your project with great performance. And then, in November, Unreal Engine 5.1 was released, which fixed some of the teething issues seen in the first release, and creates a great foundation going forward into 2023 if you decide to use Unreal Engine. So, what was new in Unreal Engine 5.1? Lumen and Nanite got huge performance and feature updates, making them even more powerful than before. For example, Nanite received the ability to receive material-driven animations and deformations. For example, you can now have photoreal trees with leaves that blow around in the wind. World Partition, the open world solution brought in in Unreal Engine 5, now supports large world coordinates, which enable you to create massive open worlds without loss of precision. This is famously an issue in space games, where the further you get away from the world origin, the less precise floating point numbers are. Level of detail support has been added for water rendering, allowing for large bodies of water with better performance. And a range of AI tools got further development too. For example, the mass entity system moved to beta. This is the system that we saw in the Matrix demo, where tens of thousands of believable AI agents could walk around the city. So as you can see, both engines received a lot of development, and the future of both engines is certainly looking interesting. With Unity's seeming focus being on multiplayer mobile games with iron source monetization strategies in place, and 
Unreal Engine's AAA scale graphics and world sizes, the engine directions are getting further and further apart. Once upon a time, it seemed as though Unity was chasing Unreal Engine's coattails, and still does to an extent with acquisitions to help them get a foothold in the film industry too, such as Ziva Dynamics and Weta, but Unreal Engine have definitely positioned themselves further into the high fidelity AAA space. So, which engine would I recommend learning in 2023? It seems a bit of a cop-out to say it depends, like I did in my 2022 video, but this year Unreal Engine has just got its claws into me and pulled me away from Unity, and I just love the workflow of Unreal Engine so much more. Whilst Unity has a lot of pros for indie development, such as C-sharp being an easy-to-learn program language, great 2D support, and a great community of tutorial makers here on YouTube, Godot also has all of this. Godot 4.0 Beta 4 released this month and moves ever closer to its full release. 2D support is phenomenal, 3D support is improving with each build, and the ability to use C Sharp as well as the custom GD script. It's a lot easier to learn than Unity with a growing community of tutorial makers as well. You can even use Godot on an Android tablet, so the barrier to entry is even lower. So as a small indie developer, why did Unreal Engine pull me away from Unity? I used to be scared of using Blueprints because I wanted to be a coder and learn C++, but actually the logic you are creating in Blueprint really helps when learning coding because it's the same concepts, but they're just more forgiving. And when using Unreal Engine, it's not an either or type situation. As even in a C++ project, you find yourself working in Blueprints a lot as the interoperability is key to the Unreal experience. You can make a project solely in Blueprint or solely in C++, but the engine really shines when you are using both together. The framework of Unreal is also already set up for game making with lots of built-in functions and functionality that you can tell has been developed by someone who actually makes games in their own engine. This is something that I got excited about with Unity finally doing it before they canned Gagea. So yeah, going forward into 2023, I'd highly recommend starting your game dev journey in Unreal. Real Engine, especially if you want to make 3D games. But if for whatever reason you don't want to, I would highly look at Godot as the replacement for Unity. But Unity is by no means a bad engine. It's good at what it does. I just feel like there's other stuff that kind of fills the niches a bit better, but it is very approachable to get into. For example, it's got great documentation, something Unreal Engine doesn't have and doesn't seem to be getting anytime soon. It's got a fantastic asset store and it's got a great community of people around it. But this video has gone on for quite a while now. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about which engine you are currently using or if you're planning to swap engines at any point, either Godot or Unreal Engine or any of the other engines that seem to be popping up. Let me know what you're using to kickstart your game dev journey in 2023 down in the comments section below. And thanks again to CGMA for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out that link below to learn more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.